The title of this video has the phrase, he is not here. And that is the title of this message. Of course, it does not refer to God not being among us. It refers to a chapter in Luke 24. Get your Bibles and read this with me. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. That's where this phrase is from. He's not here. He's not in the place of the dead. Why do I say this? Sometimes we look for Jesus, we look for God in places that have died, in which he is not there. He is life. He is alive. He is living. Sometimes we go through a very bad experience and we keep revisiting that, keep trying to find a solution to that, keep trying to say, God, where are you in that situation? But the fact is that situation is dead and God is alive. So we need to be seeking God in the living, not in the dead. For this, we have to remember God is alive. Jesus is alive alive. He rose again. That's what Easter is about. And that is what we need to remember, that he was not a human being who just died and that's it. If that's what we think, then our faith is useless because it would mean that we ourselves would also just die and be among the dead. Now you and I really need to believe that that's not the end. Because if, if we do believe that that is the end, then nothing makes sense. All our effort doesn't make sense. Our celebration doesn't make sense. The work we do doesn't make sense. Maybe it has a temporary effect. But the fact is, Jesus is not among the dead. So that's what this verse says. He is not here. Now these women went to seek Jesus in the tomb as normal humans would do, that's where they observed that they kept him in this tomb on Friday, Good Friday, and they went back to the same place. Now they were fully prepared with the spices and the ointments that they would put on Jesus' body to preserve him. Their intention was very good. They were very diligent. They were very eager. They were very devoted to Christ. The only mistake was they did not believe that he would actually come back to life. I do not call it a mistake as if I would not have done the same thing. I would probably have done the same thing because we hear prophecies and sometimes we don't feel like it's going to come in our lifetime or it's something that we are going to actively experience. We believe in the way that, yeah, it can be, it is possible. But do we actually know it? These women did not expect an empty tomb. It goes on to say that when these women heard that Jesus was not there, that he was risen, and they went and told the disciples, the disciples too, the same disciples who were with him for three years, whom Jesus had clearly told, the Son of Man will be crucified and rise again on the third day. They did not believe these women. Story of a lot of women here. <laughs> right in chapter 24, verse 11. And their words seemed to them like idle tales. Idle, idle tales, fables, stories. Oh, these women, they're off to some crazy thinking of theirs. Why do they think like that? They didn't believe that Jesus was alive. Now you guys might be thinking, oh, how silly. But actually, we do this every day. 
we keep seeking jesus in a place of death and we keep forgetting that jesus has risen from the grave what a, what is an example of this when we have pain we keep fighting against ourselves and fighting against god without realizing that jesus overcame death itself he overcame pain he healed the sick he was he is god above those things our mindset still in many areas on many levels is stuck in death and so we keep seeking god in the land of the dead there have been some things in my life that i have tried to keep revisiting and seeing how could i what could i have done to make it better silly things and big things silly things like intense standard i was chosen from my entire standard among all the six seven classes that we have to represent us in an art competition and i can draw well my parents are artists you can see one right there so i was fully confident that this would be a piece of cake but my overconfidence led me to not realize that there's a time limit on this whole thing and at the end of the competition i was only one who had a half finished drawing my details were exquisite and all that but it was half finished and for a long time it haunted me that incident that i let my school down because everyone was pinning their hopes on me in that competition and they were so surprised that i didn't even get fourth place out of 10 people <laughs> it's a it's such a silly incident but that's been an incident that i look back with uh how did that happen how did i allow that to happen and that is going on visiting the tomb of something something which i cannot change something which happened but it was in the past and there's nothing i can do about it now except prepare myself to be better there are examples in our relationships with people where things can go wrong and maybe relationships are even broken or they are forever altered it's no use to keep going back to that place and worrying about it and nitpicking what could have gone differently what should i have done why isn't it like this often when we think of such things our prayers also tend to be running in those same little circles and puddles god what do i do about this i'm so sad i don't know what to do and i have prayed many of those prayers for years but that is an example of visiting god among the dead the moment i started praying get me out of this god what do i do to move on do i need to forgive somebody do i need to do something about this that's when you start talking about life that's when god is able to change your situation now these disciples they did not believe in fact they didn't believe the women and they didn't believe the two disciples who met jesus on the road to emmaus 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 <laughs> Let me just read some incidents from the Bible about what happens after the resurrection of Jesus. Uh in Mark 15, which is a similar account of the resurrection, Mark 16 verse 10 onwards I'm reading, she that is Mary Magdalene went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept they were weeping for jesus now they were mourning and weeping only because they didn't believe that he was alive they their expectations were destroyed because they thought jesus is going to lead them in some kind of war against the romans deliver them from their oppressors and that's not the way it went exactly 
It ended with Jesus dying on the cross two days ago. Verse 11, and when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by Mary Magdalene, they did not believe. Why did they not believe? Because they thought he was still among the dead. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country, which is the two on the road to Emmaus. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. So it's not just that they would not believe the women, they didn't even believe one of them. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. The whole world is doing this right now. Many people in this world have seen Jesus through different ways. Visions, encounters, dreams, a spoken word to the heart or the mind. And we testify and we witness and it is not believed. But worse still is people in the church itself, the body of Christ itself, who when it comes to believing are found short. They love Jesus, they obey the commands, they follow him, but don't actually believe that he's alive and don't believe that they will be alive too one day and actually get to go to heaven and be with him face to face. This is everything for us. We don't get to believe only half of it. Without the other half, you might as well throw it. It's nothing, it's no use. So Jesus rebukes them. Just like he rebuked the Pharisees who missed out on the heart of God when they taught the scripture to the people, who twisted it for their own sake. Jesus now is rebuking his own disciples, his friends. Why didn't you believe? Didn't you know that the Son of Man had to suffer these things so that he could now resurrect on the third day? That is the verse in Luke. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That's another word for us. If you are suffering for your belief in Jesus right now as we speak, even this lockdown at home celebrating Easter might feel like some sort of a suffering, some sort of a restriction and what is going on in this world. But we, in being Christians, have joined ourselves to Christ on the cross so that we can receive his glory as well. We receive his glory now and in the life to come. I cannot stress how much we need to believe this. Because we need to know that we are going to a place where there is no sickness and no death where there's no temptation and there's no evil. We need to know that, not believe it, not think it's true. We need to know it with all our hearts that Jesus is alive and therefore we are alive in him.